Hello everyone and welcome back to the improvement series. Today's topic is going to be hard work versus talent. What is more important to succeed in Smash? Let's jump on in. Today's chapters is defining talent, a study from psychology, and talent in the context of Smash. Let's begin. So I first thought of this topic yesterday when I hopped on Twitter to, I actually went to ask people what they wanted to hear me talk about today. And this was the first tweet that came up on my feed. This is from Daybreak. He was a Michigan Smash 4 and Ultimate player who was always pretty high ranked on the PR over there. So very good player. And he just recently retired. And so he made this tweet that says, now that I am a retired player, I can be 100% real. Talent is much more important than effort in Smash. Now, every time I see somebody post something like this, it kind of gets like heated discussion going on of like, what what do you need more? Do you need more talent or do you need more hard work if you want to be one of the best? Lots of people kind of come at this and like the, the arguments do get pretty heated, but I think a lot of people come in without like doing any research or anything. They kind of just, they have this idea in their head and they see somebody that becomes really successful fast. And so that that like reaffirms their belief that like, oh yeah, they just had a lot of talent. Whereas you have on the other side of the coin, people are like, oh no, no, there's, it's just hard work. Look at this one example of somebody that worked hard and moved up the rankings. And therefore it solidifies it, like their belief that hard work is more important. But really, I feel like nobody actually does the, the research and looks at the scientific studies on the, the topic. So before we go in, let's let's just talk about what is talent, right? So according to dictionary.com, talent is a special or natural ability or aptitude or a capacity for achievement or success. So I think a lot of people kind of have this idea that that like uh, talent is this genetic trait that you're born with it or not. If you have this trait, you're going to be a good player. If you don't have it, you're a bad player. It's like a black and white thing. It's you have it or you don't, right? So if you have this trait, and you work hard, you'll be the best player in the world. If you don't have this trait and you work even harder, it doesn't matter because you don't ha you're not you just don't have the talent, so you'll never be good. So, does talent exist in Smash? As far as I'm aware, there has never been any attempt to search for a gene or any kind of genetics tied to being good at Smash. Now, obviously, that is a completely ridiculous statement, right? Like, obviously, there's no no genes specifically for Smash. However, there have been a lot of research and like experiments done into the field of expertise and like what it takes to be the best at something. And I think a lot of that kind of we can assume it applies to Smash as well, because there's a lot of similarities between Smash and other competitive aspects, such as like chess or even music and a lot of other like sports, things like that. So let's kind of dive in and look at some of these studies. So one, one study that I find the most interesting is uh, Laszlo Polgar's uh, experiment. So he is, this guy here, he was an educational psychologist who had this belief that geniuses are made, not born. So in his mind, he was thinking, okay, if somebody is like going to become the best in the world at something, or someone like is this crazy good musician like Mozart, Beethoven, people like that, he says that these, uh, these geniuses are made right? They're, they're made by their hard work and dedication to the craft, not born with some kind of innate talent. And so he decided to come up with this experiment to test that. So in order to test this hypothesis, he set out to raise his newborn children to become chess prodigies. So he pre-decided before his children were born that, all right, I'm going to have kids and they're going to be geniuses at chess. So he said that any child has the innate capacity to become a genius in any chosen field. So with his three children, he raised them from a very young age, started show, teaching them chess, uh, showing them how to play very young age and got them very involved with studying the game as like little tiny kids, right? And if he is correct, by the time his children are adults, it, they should become expert chess players, right? So what were the results of his study? Well, in the end, he had three daughters who went on to become the first, second, and sixth ranked woman chess players in the entire world. So I would say that's pretty shocking results that this guy was able to just decide, yeah, my children are going to become the best in the world at chess. And actually, all three of them did. It became some of the best chess players of all time. So 
that's pretty crazy. So his conclusion is that there's not some gene that enables one to become skilled at chess, but rather it's more about being trained from a young age. So there, there's more scientific studies that uh, I've read about and heard about. I actually talked about uh, one of these books that has kind of like a, a compilation of some of these studies. I talked about this in one of my prior videos about having a winning mindset. Uh, if you want to watch that video, link in the top corner here. I don't even know if I'm pointing to the right direction. Anyways, uh, I'm just going to read this quote from it. It says, The clear message from decades of research is that no matter what role innate genetic endowment may play in the achievements of gifted people, the main gift that these people have is the same one we all have, the adaptability of the human brain and body, which they have taken advantage of more than the rest of us. So just from analyzing all these different studies, they pretty much came to this conclusion that it's not some gene that makes you have this talent, but rather it's the, the talent itself is the ability of your brain to be adaptable and like learning essentially. And that in order to be the best, you have to be able to use this talent the most effectively and learn the game or whatever the craft is that you're doing, right? So talent doesn't exist. If this concept of talent doesn't exist, why do you see some players get good faster than others, like especially when it comes to Smash? Some players are still bad after thousands of hours, while others are great with just hundreds of hours of practice, right? Why do you see this big discrepancy between the amount of time played and how fast people get good at the game? So I want to just pose a, a thought experiment for you. We're going to say, who would win in this situation? Given that each player had 100 hours to practice Smash, who would you bet on to win? Player number one is this guy. This is elite PlayStation gamer. He's been gaming since three years old, but he's never played Smash in his life. Player one. Player two, this guy. Epic watermelon farmer. Grew up on a farm and never had a TV. Never played Smash in his life. So technically you could say they're on even playing fields, right? Because they both never played Smash. But I think it was pretty obvious that if you pit these two after 100 hours of practice, I bet you anything the elite PlayStation gamer is going to win. And why is that? Well, I think what people perceive as like this gen genetic ability has more to do with your environment and experiences growing up rather than actually like some inherent ability to be good at something. And just just to prove it, right? I'm insanely good at Smash. And look, here I was. I was playing video games from like this tiny age. All right, joking aside, uh, but seriously, I think if you look at people that are that are like really good at Smash, I think common things you'll see is that they they probably started playing video games from a young age, whereas people that have a harder time getting good at Smash, maybe their parents didn't let them play as many video games, so they they never really developed that hand-eye coordination that that like gamers that have been playing for many 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 years have had, and also like when you're young your brain is much more adaptable and it's easier to learn new things. So if we go back to the to the other slide, right? When you're young from three years old gaming, it's easier for you to learn and get better at it. Whereas somebody that's like an old farmer, his brain is already like almost set in stone and it's a lot more difficult for him to learn a new skill. So the, the practice hours doesn't necessarily equal your skill level gained. And besides just like those environmental factors growing up on like, the amount of video games and stuff you played there's another thing to consider which is like how efficient your practice is now here's a quote i forgot to put oh, i forgot to put who the quote was by i can't remember i'll i'll put it in the description anyways uh i'm just gonna read this quote it's a little bit long but i think it illustrates the point really well consider the activity of two basketball players practicing free throws for one hour player a shoots 200 practice shots player b shoots 50. the player b retrieves his own shots dribbles leisurely, and takes several breaks to talk to friends. Player A has a colleague who retrieves the ball after each attempt. The colleague keeps a record of the shots made, and if the shot is missed, the colleague records whether that shot was short, long, left, right, and the shooter reviews the results after every 10 minutes of practice. So technically, they've been practicing for like the same amount hours-wise, but to characterize the hour of practice as equal would hardly be accurate. Assuming this is typical of their practice routine and they are equally skilled at the start, which would you predict would be the better shooter after 100 hours of practice? I think it's pretty clear that the person that had the help practicing is going to do a lot better, right? So 
while this is like kind of an extreme example, and obviously in Smash it doesn't really happen to that extent, I think you get cases of people that you have people that are just like playing the game, or you have people that are actually practicing. So people are just playing the game. They're just having fun. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna press smash attack here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this crazy move because it'll be funny. Where you have people that like unconsciously are actually practicing because throughout every single game they're constantly asking themselves questions like, oh okay, well if this move didn't work in this situation, what what other options can I try to do better next time? This matchup is giving me a little bit of trouble. Like, how can I figure out how to do better? They're not just playing the game, right? They're constantly thinking about improving and what they could be doing better. And that makes a big difference. The players that get good fast are always practicing whether they realize it or not. So in summary, there's no gene in your DNA that's going to decide if you're going to be a good Smash player or not. Because of course, that is a completely ridiculous statement. However, environmental factors that you can't control do affect the speed at which you improve in Smash. And they could have an effect on like your overall potential to becoming great. So this concept of talent, I think, does exist, but not in the way that a lot of people think about it. And so if you're trying to get good at Smash, I don't think it's worth getting hung up on the idea of like, do you have talent or not? Because at the end of the day, if you put in the hours of practice, you will get better. And the tournaments that just say who got the most better. So if your goal is to become the best in the world, you have to be getting better faster than everyone else. But if you want to just enjoy the game and enjoy the process of getting better, you will get a lot better no matter whether you have this talent or not. And I think you can still appreciate that journey of getting better at the game and improving it as you play. So yeah, that was my, my talk for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch you guys next week. Peace!